Good morning everybody, Decaf here from wiseflightheadquarters.com and today we are going to talk about making cockpits. Uh, so this specifically is going to be about making instrument panels for our cockpits because that's generally the most detailed part and can be uh, some of the trickier parts in our uh, all-around model. So right here we have the 727 cockpit that I've been working on for the past week or so and there's only three panels out of the six that I've really uh, made from scratch. Uh, a lot of times you can reuse panels if you've made them for other aircraft. For example, up here, this is for the 737. Same for the header up there, which I need to change a little bit. And then down here, this was also just a little bit adaption from my 737 cockpit. So because there are a lot of similarities, we can take things that we've previously made or if we just want to scratch make stuff, well, we're going to talk about that today. So right now, we're going to uh, probably break this uh, series up into a few different videos. Uh, and today, we're going to talk about making panels like this. Uh, flat panels uh, with some basic, you know, knobs and dials and lights and things like that. So let's go ahead and start talking about what kind of references we want to find. Um, there's a couple different things that we want to pay attention to in trying to find references. Um, number one, if you just find a whole bunch of pictures, you can work with that. The only problem comes with really getting the relationship sizes and distances between all the different parts. That can be pretty darn tricky. So what I like to do is find direct uh, views of a cockpit. So the difference here, let me just demonstrate it with this cockpit is let's say I'm trying to look at this panel right here. Well, I might get a picture that comes in like this. But the problem with this is it's at an angle. I don't know the exact dimensions of anything in here. I don't know how they're related to each other. But if, let me just isolate this for ease of view. And it, But if I come in like this, directly looking onto it, like I'm looking at a map or something like that, uh, I get a much better view of what's going on here. So let's take a look at some images. Uh, this is the image that I used for that. Uh, now this comes straight from a flight simulator. I think it was uh, FS 2004 or something like that. Uh, and it's great. It's low detail, but that's okay. We don't really care about the low detail. We care about the orientation of stuff because just looking at it, we can quickly make approximations and things. Uh, some other things that you might find are layouts like this where you just have the instrument hole and stuff like that. Uh, you might find uh, stuff like this on hobbyist um, sites where they actually make a flight simulator. They build a full-size cockpit of an airplane, put all the electronics in, and, well, they're going to have to have an instrument panel. So they might have some dimensions for that. And then there's also the third option, which is drawings. And this could be engineering drawings or uh, pilot trainer drawings. Uh, something like this, you can... Typically, uh, you can find them for like 30 bucks or something like that if you really want to do that. Um, I know for my 737, I was able to find one absolutely for free, which was great. But the 727 was a lot harder to find things for. Uh, it's just the way things go. Sometimes the information's right there. Other times, you really have to dig around for it. So let's go ahead and import this guy into a background image for a new aircraft. So let's go new. We're going to get rid of everything here and we're going to go in, ahead and find our background image. And cockpit files, number 11, and here we go. So the thing with this is that you can scale this however you want. It really doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing that matters is if you can zoom in, you see everything that's going on there. So the first thing that I like to do is sort of set up the little panels that are on uh, each instrument panel itself. So if you see here, we have a general outline that comes along and it's bolted in at four points. So that would be something that I'd try to make first because it's sort of in the background of my panel. So I typically just go ahead and use a plane here and I like to use the wireframe mode because I can go in and edit mode and scale these to the right size and get everything lined up the way I want it to. And it's really easy once I get something like this that's right size, still in edit mode, I'll duplicate it, bring it down to the next section, and all I have to do is now, oh, I just got to bring this guy up like that, nice and simple, maybe scoot this out just a tiny bit, 
however you need the minor modifications, it's already about the same size. So you can go ahead and make a lot of things like that. The other thing that you can do here is immediately get a nice uh, color on there so that it stands out. Uh, just by going into the textured mode here and going to vertex paint mode, I typically like to go with a medium to light gray for these kind of things. Um, it, it helps you because there's a lot of times you're going to have a gray marker or a gray little switch or something like that. So you don't want the really light gray or the really, really dark grays because th those are good to stand out from. And you don't want the black because that's sort of the background that's going to be behind this. So let's go back into our view mode here and let's start taking a look at some other things here. Um, for example, these guys right here, these are 3D switches and they're all sort of angled. Um, there's a couple, I don't exactly remember where they were, but they were sort of at a different angle, you know, like that right there. Um, and let's see, we want to make it uh, 3D. Well, if we make it 3D, we're going to have a lot of vertices, but we can make these 2D as well. Um, it really is up to how you want to do it. So let's go ahead and make this 3D. So I'm going to snap my cursor pretty much to the center of one of these guys. And I'm going to add in a cylinder. There we go. And I'm not going to do 32 vertices. No way. I'm going to go for something more like 16 at the most. I like to do 8 or 10 for some of these things. So let's go into 10. And we'll snap that in. And that looks pretty good there. So we're going to go into the number 7 view mode. And we're going to scale this guy all the way down until it reaches the size of the base of this switch. And as we look at this, you know, well, that's probably coming out of the uh, instrument panel about the right amount. Now we could even scale it just a tiny bit down. Uh, we're going to keep our cursor at the same spot. And now we're going to work on the little arm that's going to come out of this. So we're going to add in another cylinder, but this time we're not going to do 10. We're going to do something more like five or six because we really don't need the vertice count for this. It, all we really need is just something that's sticking out of there. And I'm going to bump this radius down. Let's go nice and small. And we're going to scale it just like that. And then what we're going to do here is bring these guys up into there. And we're going to bring these guys down. But notice now, I have to go in, if I'm in edit mode the whole time, I have to go back in and reselect all my vertices in order to do this last step, and that is to rotate this. So if I'm like this, I'm going to rotate it about my x-axis just a wee bit, and I'm going to scoot it on down this way so we can get a little switch shape like that. So that's one way to do that. Uh, the other way that you can do this is if we go over here, we can just make a little 2D one. Uh, let's go and give it 10 vertices and we'll fill it and we're going to shrink that on down. So we have this guy here. We're going to flip the normals because they're going the wrong way for us. But then what we're going to do is add in a plane and we're going to need to scale this in the right amount. Scale this in the Y. Flip the normals around because I messed up. Scale this down some more and then move it down over like this. And that sort of simulates a switch if you're just looking at a little 2D thing. The important thing to note here is that right now both of these are the exact same plane. So we got to bump this up just the slightest amount uh, in order to raise it up from the rest of it. Otherwise, it's going to sort of mesh in and you're not going to be able to distinguish the color differences between these guys. So that's that guy there. Uh, we also have these instrument dials here. Uh, these, I typically don't deal with the markings on the inside because it's a lot of vertices that you're going to add with that. I might, however, do the dial because that's sort of the main component of that. So we'll add in a circle here. We will fill it. We'll keep it at 10 vertices. Sure, that will work. And we'll just position this just about right. We will flip these normals around and we're going to add in our plane, sort of the exact same thing that we did before. You can go ahead and, you know, like scale these guys down on this side, scale it down over here, just get sort of a dial shape, and then you can bring it over 
and raise it up just slightly. So then you can go ahead and paint those guys however you want. Uh, the other thing you could do is make those 3D, uh, but I typically do not do anything really major 3D stuff until I get to the front instrument panel where the pilot is looking most of the time when flying. You know, this is sort of a secondary instrument panel, so we want to be careful here because this is going to have a, a bit of a drain on our other flying enjoyment because it's going to be extra vertices and, and faces that are going to need to be rendered. But if we are going to be doing lots of 3D stuff and want to make it really good, the front instrument panel is the place to do that because you're looking at that most of the time. To make it so the instrument panel is in the back for the navigators or up above or in, in the center console area, you want to make those a little bit less detailed because they don't need to be as detailed as the front. So 2D stuff is great here. So that's where we're going to stop for today because we sort of talked about the pieces in here if you got any questions about what's going on uh, or how to make a certain thing go ahead and shoot me a comment down below send me a pm on wiseflightheadquarters.com and i'll be happy to talk about this stuff with you until next time have fun <laughs>